Hey y'all, Lynette here at Homesteading on the Home Front. I realized this morning that it had been three weeks since my last garden tour, so I figured while I was up puttering around tonight, I would show you around. Um, things have changed a lot since then, so um, let's do a lot walk through. We've got the perennials here, out. Something's been eating the black-eyed Susans and my zinnias and sunflowers. Um, I've spotted some army worms. I suspect the most damage was done by Japanese beetles. Um, but I have been spraying with um, peppermint oil, hopefully to confuse them. I also threw down some dimetaceous earth and um, I've sprayed with neem oil. So, between all of those treatments, I, I think we are we're um, overcoming the bug battle. In this row right here, um, you can see I harvested the right side of garlic, the left row. Um, the, the heads are still small, so I'm leaving them in. Um, there's not a lot of dead branches, so I figured I can get away with it. In the right side, um, I planted two more rows of yellow-eye beans. We've got plenty of time for them to come up and, and um, mature, so hopefully they'll be sprouting in a couple of days. This row is where I dug up my potatoes. I need to work on this and um, the plan for this row is to throw down some kale seed and um, maybe some lettuce and cilantro, some cool weather crops that um, can take some of the the freeze or at least the cool temps. This whole row is zinnias and as you can see they have started in all their glory. When I come early in the morning it's um, it's rare that I don't see a butterfly fluttering and um, we saw two hummingbirds the other day on the red ones. So the plan for these was to be um, bouquets but we had the issue with the you can see here, right? Like this is not going to be a bouquet. Um, but now that I think the eating issue is over, we've got some good, good um, flowers, and I will be picking them to decorate my counter. Here you see this is our plan, or my plan, for all of the rows eventually to throw down some weed block and um, prevent the weeds from sprouting. These were the boxes that my lights came in that I used to start the seeds, and I noticed they were like the perfect size, so I threw those down. Um, eventually, it'll be covered in wood chips or um, shredded paper, but. Um, it's keeping the weeds from growing and encouraging the worms to come underneath and feed the soil. This row of tomatoes right here is was actually the last row to get put in. Um, we have some mixtures, some leftovers from the other rows, and then um, we have some garnet tomatoes and margaret curtain tomatoes that I'm anxious to try. They are, like I said, they were the last ones to go in, so they are the most behind. We've got a row of sunflowers here. I believe this is a velvet queen that's popped out. Lots more waiting in the winds. Um, several different types of sunflowers here, so that's why some are taller than the others. But again, see, this is what the beetles did but the new growth seems to be untouched, so I think we're, we're overcoming. This row is entirely kasha squash, and it's taking over. Um, this empty row right here was potatoes. I harvested that row as well, and my plan is to move all of the kasha vines over in this direction. They were, some of them were actually climbing on the sunflowers, so I, um, harvested the potatoes and moved the vines over this way and I'm seeing here this is very exciting this is the first kasha that I have growing that makes me happy 
Most folks in New England aren't very familiar with kashas, so I hope to introduce them. Um, kashas are also pretty resistant to squash bugs and vine borers. And we, I, so far, knock on wood, I have not have an is had an issue with squash bugs. A friend of mine um, just asked about them on Facebook. She had some nymphs on her leaves, so I've been pretty vigilant looking for them, but so far I haven't found them. Um, I have been spraying the leaves of my squash and zucchini with peppermint oil. I got this idea from Gary at the Rusted Garden. Uh, basically it's a drop of peppermint oil per two ounces of water. And I have a um, pressure pump sprayer that, that I fill up with, um, I think I did a gallon and a half and it's lasted me a couple applications. Um, we just got some rain the other day, so this morning I went back again and I um, applied the peppermint water to the leaves. And what this does is it confuses the insects so they don't smell the zucchini and squash. Um, I can go through and show you, these leaves are just massive. That zucchini is gonna be picked. So summer squash. Here was a, a hole and so I just planted some cucumber seeds and you can see over there I anywhere I had holes in the garden I put cucumbers because my vines aren't going to last forever. Um, this variety is 53 days to harvest and um, we're getting to the point now where we're getting close to 53 days before our first possible frost. So I wanted to get those in the garden so that I have something to take the place of my other cukes when they kick the bucket. Here we have more summer squash, more zucchini. I need to get in and remove the yellow leaves and encourage some new growth. This row is mostly zinnias. I've got some lettuce in there that is looking great and I love being able to walk past the bags of lettuce in the grocery store and laugh since I don't have to buy it anymore. These are my cherry tomatoes and they are doing well. They're, as you can see, they're growing up the the sticks and the supports I've had to tie them a couple of times the purple plants in between are basil and those plants also got pretty um, eaten by pests but they're coming back and I just noticed this so I'm going to show you I noticed this morning um, that early blight has hit um, frankly I'm surprised that it's taken this long to be an issue so what I am doing is I'm removing the leaves. Now you can tell that this is yellow, uh, early blight because can you see those concentric circles in the brown area? That is a sign of early blight. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm removing all of the yellowing and tomorrow morning I'm going to come through and spray all the leaves with a baking soda water mixture. And what that does is that changes the pH of the tomato leaves um, so that the early blight cannot survive on the leaves. Um, these tomatoes right here are yellow pears. You can see that they are kind of shaped like a pear. I grew these in Virginia. I do not believe that they got this large, so I'm pretty excited. I did not have much luck in Virginia growing tomatoes. I think it was a combination of the fact that I didn't know what I was doing, and also it was so hot and humid there um, that diseases prevailed. Um, I want to show you these. This, look at this. Can you see all of the tomatoes here and all of the blossoms? This is what is called um, berries, berries crazy tomato, berries something. Um, I planted them really not knowing what they were. They're yellow tomatoes. And look at, I mean, look at, it's just loaded, right? I picked the first three this morning. And um, I really enjoyed the taste of it. I, this may surprise you given all of the tomatoes that I am growing, but I don't like raw tomatoes. And look, here's more blight. And I was just here this morning 
Um, and I thought I cut off all the yellow leaves. So that means that it is really taking hold and I really need to get in here with the baking soda. These two tomato plants right here are volunteers that popped up in my compost pile in Virginia. And I saved the seeds. Now it's been four years since we moved from Virginia, which means these seeds are at least five years old and they germinated with no issues whatsoever. Um, and I'm looking forward to them ripening. I'm really gonna try to identify them this year. They get dark on top. Can you see where the dark green is? That's gonna turn to like a brown dark purple. So I'm wondering if these are an indigo tomato of some sort, but when they ripen, I will get out the seed catalogs and see what I can find. This weedy mess is greens, we've got lettuces, we've got kale, and way at the end of the row we have three watermelons that we bought in Ohio and transported back with us. Um, those three watermelon plants are the only plants in this garden that were not started from seed by me. So, um, yeah, it gives me a little bit of a thrill to look around and know that I grew everything that we can see. This is the cucumber row. Some of them, this one plant in particular is not doing real well, so I think that's gonna come out pretty soon. Um, these are picklers right here. New since last time are my trellises. And the story behind these was, um, I was at a friend's house admiring his backyard fencing, and I said, what is that? I need those for, for trellising. And uh, he told me he had lots of extra pieces and his wife was more than thrilled to get them out of her backyard. So thanks Wes and Reba for the trellising. Um, it's working out fantastically. Um, first of all, it makes it much easier to walk in the walkway. Yes, it's very weedy now, but prior to the trellising, um, it looked like this, where the cucumbers were all in the rows and it was hard to walk. So it's much easier to walk through the rows now. It's also much easier for the bees to see the blossoms. Um, so not that pollination was an issue for me. Um, the bees are always buzzing around in here when, when I come in the morning. Um, but it just gets the flowers off the ground and easier for the bees to see. And the third thing that it does is it makes harvesting really easy. Like this cucumber right here. Very easy to see. I missed it this morning, apparently. Or maybe it just grew a lot. But it makes the cukes easy to see and find so that, um, you know, they, you know how cukes are. If you, if you miss them they become giant huge monsters within a day or two. Here's another one. I'm gonna pick this one, because I these are actually not pickling cucumbers, these are market moors, but I don't like them to get huge. And I'm thinking of making a batch of pickles tomorrow, so they will get turned into pickles. This vine is not doing well either. I don't know if it's, um, I have seen some cucumber beetles in here, so apparently my peppermint trick didn't fool them, but see there's two more. I'll come pick those tomorrow morning. Locked, lots of cukes hiding. All right, we've got another row of tomatoes here. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know what most of them are. I do know that, ooh, that these lovelies right here are called Black Vernissage. I got them free with an order from Baker Creek, and so I've got five plants. And some of them are starting to ripen already. You can see the red flesh on these. So that's about as big as they're gonna get. They're not a huge tomato. They're kind of like a saladette size. Um, bigger than a cherry, but smaller than a regular one. But I'm looking forward to tasting those and seeing how they do. Over here we have my Juliettes. And as you can see, we've got a ripe one there. A couple more over there. I've already picked several. So these are going to go in, in the freezer. And when I have enough to roast them to make a sauce, that's exactly what I'm going to do. 
this row starting at the end is sunflowers and then more zinnias and then we have some cilantro that has bolted and I'm I'm okay with that I'm letting it go it's too hot for it to grow right now but the bees love the blossoms and then the blossoms will give me seed for next year and then we have some dill it's just starting to head up and um, a couple more zucchini I just started from seed the other day to take the place of the ones that will quickly be coming to the end of their um, life we have another row of tomatoes these are um, mostly San Marzano's I've got some beefsteak and some berm banks they're the larger tomatoes and I expect that they will be the last to ripen even though this was the first row that got put in the garden here we have some strike green beans since we last visited we picked um, several quarts of these they were delicious my husband took some and um, froze them for dinners there are more on the plants and I haven't picked them because my thought is I want a mess of these next year so I think I'm just gonna let them ripen and then save the seeds for next year so that I can plant way more of these they were very prolific um, very impressed with the number of beans that we got from the plants here at the end of the row there's more lettuce Here we have some jalapenos. This plant, I don't know what's wrong with it. It is not doing well at all. It's been from, from birth, it's been grown in the very same conditions that this one has. Um, again, you can see something has gotten to the leaves, but hopefully we've gotten to the, the end of that. These are all baby jalapenos that I started from seed this year. They're an early variety. Those two at this end and the two at the other end, I overwintered. We've got some eggplant here that appears to be doing well. Um, I haven't seen any flowers on it yet, but it's looking good. These are some yellow stuffing peppers that are coming. So again, if you look closely at the leaves, you will see they've been not on but the peppers are bouncing back. These two eggplants, this one and this one are teeny tiny and I don't know what their problem is. Again, since birth, they've been raised in the same conditions as these two. So who knows? Um, I've got a little blossom right there. Hopefully we will have an eggplant or two growing. Some bags of shredded paper. When it cools off, the plan is to um, hoe the weeds out of this row and lay down the shredded paper like at the very end down there for weed protection. And then not much has changed in this last row. I've got peas that, that I'm letting die off so that I can harvest seeds. And then these are yellow eye beans. Again, I'm just letting them dry on the vine so that I can harvest seeds. Down with the bees. As you can see, the middle hive is thriving. Lots of bees tonight. The nuke on the right is doing very well. Um, this hive right here, I got in the other day and couldn't find a queen, but the queen cells had been opened. So I'm hoping that there was a virgin queen in there that hadn't taken her maiden flight because of the rain. Uh, so the plan is to get back in soon and make sure that I see eggs. If I do not, then I will take a frame of eggs from this hive and put them in this hive and let them raise their own queen. It's late in the season to be doing that, but I'm going to give it a try. If it doesn't work, then I just have to combine the, the hives for winter, and that's all right. I have no qualms about doing that. So one more glance at the garden. Again, these, these berries, crazy tomatoes are just bananas. I cannot believe when they were all in bloom it, it, there were hundreds hundreds of them 
and now they're growing like mad. Like I said, I tasted one today and it was very good. It was sweet. It was not acidic at all, which um, is pretty typical of the yellow tomatoes. Um, so I'm looking forward to having those. Really excited to see that kasha squash growing because not only does it mean we'll have a kasha, but it also means that that's next year's seed. All right, I think that's it. I'll be back in another couple weeks. Hopefully by then we will have lots of red tomatoes and I can tell you about the varieties and my thoughts as far as taste goes. Um, I've been kind of obsessing over tasting videos on YouTube and making a list for next year's varieties already. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a tomato adventure and you're welcome to come along for the ride. All right, I think we're running out of sunlight here and I've got a lawn to mow. So we will catch you later. Bye, Flosstube.